I wanted to sing a song here to prove I'm a real voice and not an AI, but then I could get dinged by the copyright strike, so you're just gonna have to trust me. People whose marriages lasted less than a year, months, weeks, days, or even hours? When did you realize you'd made a mistake and why? Story one. Not me, but a friend. Their marriage didn't last through the reception. Groom got absolutely muck-faced drunk and slaps the bride's child from a previous relationship and then hits the bride in the face. She filed for an annulment the next morning. Edit. Just wanted to update on the fallout a little since this comment has a lot of traction. Groom was a truck driver, long and short haul, so he and the bride didn't spend a ton of time together over their relationship, so I guess she didn't know he was like that. The actual assault happened behind closed doors and was kept pretty hush-hush until the next morning to save face. I don't know enough about marriage law to comment on the legality of their marriage, but I was told she would be filing for an annulment, so that's what I wrote. This all happened about 10 years ago, and I'm no longer in contact with the bride, but last I heard she was doing better and had moved on. The groom had racked up several thousand dollars of debt in the bride's name during the relationship that wasn't discovered until things started falling apart. I think he's in jail now. Oh, such a catch. Do they accept letters in the prison where he is? I simply must write to this one. Oh, how did this guy ever get this girl to say yes to the first date, let alone agree to get married? Story 2 I had a friend who married one of the most horrible people I've ever met. So charming at first, but within the first three months of them being together, we all started to notice a few things, and we decided none of us liked him. One day, we saw hand-shaped bruises on her arm and literally the next day they were at the courthouse getting married. We had a small gathering shortly after, which he ended up turning into their wedding celebration, bachelor party, whatever he could to make it all about him. He got extremely drunk and basically tried to unalive her in front of all of us. She told us they didn't have their rings yet, but they would get them soon, and he walked over to her and started strangling her for embarrassing him. She ended up breaking down and realizing that the entire four months of their relationship and nine days of their marriage, he had progressively gotten more and more abusive, and she made a mistake. Hell yeah, she made a mistake. Have you ever gotten out of a situation and only after you just left realized how deep in trouble you were after reflecting on it? I'm sure that's happened in some level to most of us. I can think of a few instances where it's happened to me. As much as the phrase hindsight is twenty twenty is so cliche, it seems to be strangely apt here. I'm glad she got out of it before it really got bad. Story 3. On our honeymoon, she didn't want to do anything but fight. So I left two days early to be with my dog. <laughs> then she stopped wearing her ring and refused to tell people she was married referring to me as her boyfriend instead. The final straw was when my grandpa was passing, and she said, I wish he'd just hurry up and unalive already. I'm tired of this apartment being so depressing all the time. Made it four months in all before filing for divorce. Edit. I want to thank you for all the support and the interest in my little story here. I've been getting a lot of repeat questions, so I'll put a little fact here. How long were we together? We were together about a year, give or take a little. Did I notice the red flags? The relationship seemed relatively normal until we got married. She had her share of issues, bad childhood, severe anxiety, bulimia, but I was dumb and thought I could fix them. If there were red flags, why did I marry her? I had just had a really bad breakup with my girlfriend of four years a few months before meeting my first wife. We had made plans for our future, marriage, kids, the works, and the breakup really messed me up. I was insecure and afraid of being alone, so I probably would have married anyone. Young, dumb, and unaccustomed to heartbreak. Did I keep the dog? Of course. I may have gotten rid of the wife, but no chance in hell was I getting rid of the dog. We took her and moved her far away, and now she's got lots of people around all the time to spoil her and fatten her with treats. She recently got a little brother who tolerates her. <laughs> Are things better now? Very much so. 
I took a few years being single and just learning who I was and wanted to be. I'm happily remarried, and this time it's stuck. And I'm stuck. My wife won't let me leave. Send help? Is it me, or every time I hear the phrase, I can fix him slash her, it's gonna end up in disaster? I think a true relationship lies in accepting who that other person is. Flaws and all. People grow, people can change, and you can encourage people, especially if you're in a committed relationship and love them. But when you get down to it, people are going to be who they are. Forcing them to be someone they're not just never works out. Story 4. I had two good friends who were brothers. They were party animals. Out drinking at bars all the time, sleeping with different women every weekend, recreational substances. Their idols were the whole jackass crew back in the day. They just loved that whole bachelor lifestyle, and to be honest, I was a bit jealous of the fun they were having. I was in a longer-term relationship for many years. Eventually, the younger brother settled down and got engaged to a really nice girl. Something broke in the older brother's mind, and he suddenly was in some sort of race to get married before his younger brother. He kept living the bachelor lifestyle, but then one day announced to us all he was engaged to be married, and with his fiancée, they'd set a wedding date to be married six months before his younger brother. None of us ever met this girl before we found out he was engaged. When we did meet her, it was clear he'd not been open with her about his lifestyle. She was a very prim and proper lady, very shy, quiet. They worked together, so she only knew the professional side of him. Over the months leading to the wedding, his partying kept going. He was cheating on her with one-night stands, but she was oblivious. Our group of friends told him he needed to tell her what he was doing, but he refused. I was nominated to be the one to tell her before it was too late. I met her for coffee and told her how he was cheating on her and the substances he was using. She was generally taken aback, but she told me to my face she was still going to marry him and that she could change him. Ugh. I left with a clear conscience after that. Fast forward to their wedding day and it was an absolute mess. He's drunk before the reception even starts and passes out in a corner sometime after dinner. As I'm leaving, I say goodbye to his bride, and I can see it in her eyes. The definition of regret. They ended up being together for exactly one year. Her final straw was when she really wanted to go out for a special brunch for their one-year anniversary. She made plans at a fancy place. He told her he was going out to party the night before, but he would be home in time to get some sleep before their anniversary started. He ended up hooking up with some chick he picked up at the bar, and when he finally made it home the next afternoon, his wife had packed her bags and left. I felt bad for her at first, but then I remembered how I laid everything on the table with her, and she still did it. I've never seen or spoken to her again. My friend ended up repeating his pattern. He's on his fourth marriage now, but does seem to have finally settled down this time. Story 5. Wasn't my marriage, but I am involved in this story. Basically, my ex-girlfriend's boss left his wife on their honeymoon because she and him were having an affair. They had the wedding and flew off to Bali, but he was sneaking off into the bathroom to send my then-girlfriend peen pics from his honeymoon. I saw one of the pictures and confronted her. She admitted to it and messaged him back to tell him that I had found out. My understanding is that he basically came out of the bathroom, told his wife, I think this was a mistake. We shouldn't have gotten married. Got on a plane and flew home. Left her there on her own. On her friggin' honeymoon. With no explanation. In the end, I had to be the one to go over to her place and tell her what had really happened because he wouldn't own up to it. So I think the marriage lasted all of about three days. Edit. So just to add a few additional details to clarify, as I wasn't expecting this to get so much attention. This all happened like ten years ago. She was my first girlfriend from high school, and we had been together for ten years, so I was 24 at the time. I'm actually fine about it now, because we were unhappy and it really wasn't meant to be. And I'm happily married. The husband and my ex were having a full-blown affair and had been sleeping together for several months before the wedding. 
It wasn't just peen pics being sent. He was also sending her just generally spicy and lovey-dovey messages about how much he missed her and how much he wished it was her there with him instead of his wife. However, the message which I happened to see, which blew the whole thing wide open, did include a peen pic, as well as a spicy picture she had sent him in return. He walked out on his new wife because he knew he had been busted and didn't tell her why. So she was sitting around thinking she had done something wrong. A couple weeks later, my friend called me with a message. You see, I had told him what happened, and he had told someone who had told someone who actually ended up knowing her and had told her. This is how she learned the truth. Then, through that same chain of people, she got the message back to me requesting that I call her so we could talk, along with her number. I had actually met her a couple of times before through my ex and her work, but I barely knew her. So I called her, she invited me over, and we had a long talk. I told her everything I knew from my side. She hadn't learned any of this until she heard it through that friend, so it was pretty rough. I moved on quickly, but they had a really rough and messy divorce. Australian law says you must first try a one-year separation before you can divorce. However, I did run into her a few years ago, and she was remarried and seemed very happy. As for the two offending parties, they did start dating publicly, which I think caused a lot of drama and friction in their personal lives. Hugely so at their work with the other employees, as you can imagine. I heard they broke up after a few years together. Edit 2. Bonus Gossip Also, my wife just reminded me of another detail. I've told her the story before. My ex was invited to the wedding, but I wasn't. She said it was because they were trying to do it on a budget. I found out later that at the wedding she got really drunk and upset, obviously because her newfound fella was marrying someone else and sort of started causing a scene. It was apparently bad enough that the best man had to get her in the back of his car and leave the wedding early to take her home as it looked like she was about to spill the beans in front of everyone. Oh my god! Goodness, the main story was good tea, but all those additional details, that was like the Boston Harbor. Everything just kept building up. Story 6. To be honest, I didn't really want to be married to her. However, she was determined to get married by age 24 regardless, and at the time I had significant difficulties saying no. I was working 60 plus odd hours a week in a kitchen to help pay for everything, and I was struggling with my mental health at the time, and we grew further and further apart emotionally. I found out less than five months into the marriage that she had been unfaithful to me for at least a year. So six to seven months before the wedding, whilst she had been planning it, she had been sleeping with other people. Whilst she had been putting serious pressure on me to provide money for her dream wedding, she had also had an abortion because she didn't know whether I would have been the father or not. When I found this all out, I basically had a breakdown and tried taking my own life. I also spent a few years after this blaming myself for the breakdown of my marriage and her behavior. Story 7. Not me, but my brother. He got his first serious girlfriend during his senior year of college. He was doing a lot of different stuff with her and told me that he was really happy. I told him that I thought that was great, but that he needed to remember to take things slow. A week later, he bought a ring. Everyone in my family attempted to talk him out of it. Everyone. But I knew my brother was going to do whatever he wanted, so I just said, sure. They rented a house, bought furniture, moved in, got married, and after a month, they got divorced. I think it was soon enough to get an annulment, but I'm not sure. Main thing was that my brother wanted to move out of our hometown when he was finished with college. His wife was completely fine, never leaving. I don't even think she was going to school. She would just sit at home all day. So, that was that. Good times. Story 8. My ex was with a woman for five years and married for two to three months. She had cheated on him and got caught before the wedding, but they somehow managed to work it out. She had also pressured him into marriage by giving him money and saying, if you don't come back with a ring, it's over. So two to three months into the marriage, he had noticed that she was acting shady again, excusing herself to the bedroom randomly with her iPad and going to her girlfriend's house 
she's straight, at any given hour to have sleepovers and hang out. One day, she left to her girlfriends as usual, and he found she had left her iPad this time, which she usually keeps close guarded. He found exchanges between her and at least three different men. One message from her to the man that bags their groceries saying that she was pregnant. My ex cannot have children. The other two men she had cheated with was a co-worker and the security guard at the local mall. Story 9. We got married by mail. A double proxy, only available from one U.S. state. We're both military. I actually knew before we got our marriage certificate that it wasn't working because he became insanely controlling after we moved to Germany together. He would scream at me when I'd ask him to go on road trips on the weekends to see the adorable little German towns. He would scream at me in front of all of his friends. My friends were never invited over. He did not allow me to have access to my own money, which went into our joint account. And when I would buy something I felt I needed on Amazon, he'd scream at me. This would usually be soaps. I have very sensitive skin and can't use the shampoo or body wash combos that are made for men. He would scream at me over the littlest things like how I folded our towels after they dried. The final straw was when we went on our honeymoon to Greece. He brought two guy friends along. He refused to have spicy time with me and even told me he really didn't want to have spicy time at all anymore and then he publicly humiliated me by screaming at me in a very public venue around a lot of strangers. He of course was cool to his friends and they went swimming. I sat in a beach chair and cried. I just knew it. We made it about four months before I moved out. Did this guy ever scream at her before? Did they spend any actual time together? How long did they spend before this proxy marriage went through? How much you want to bet they only met online before? Story 10. One week after being married. Exactly seven days. I heard him in the bathroom with the shower on, but he was talking on the phone. As if the shower was loud enough so that I couldn't hear him. Anyway, I grabbed the phone and ran. I mean ran out the back door to the other side of the pool, so no matter which way he came towards me, I would move the opposite direction. No surprise, it was a girl. She told me he never mentioned he had a wife or was seeing anyone. They apparently had been dating for months. He told me a hogwash story about how he kept trying to end it with her, but she was possessive and wouldn't leave him alone and kept calling. I was 19 and stupid, so I stayed with him. But I knew at that moment I had made a mistake in marrying him. Thank God we didn't have children. But we stayed together for four years, and I endured more than any woman ever should. Fifteen years later, he's now in prison. No surprise. Story 11. Not the person married, but the brother-in-law of the groom slash brother of the bride. Lasted less than a year married. Several dating. He treated my sister like sun-baked horse poop. And while honestly she is a pile of sun-baked horse poop, you shouldn't treat your damn wife like it. Nearly got the cops called on him several times while they were together. And they ended up breaking it off because my sister finally got fed up with his... junk. For those interested in how they're doing, last time I heard the dumb jerk she called a husband got a job but nothing else. And my sister went through another marriage that lasted less than a year because they got married almost as soon as they started dating, which ended well. Full sarcasm. She cheated on him at least 12 times, according to her estimation. She also apparently has Google eyes for someone who went to jail for aggravated assault and is going back to jail also for aggravated assault. She's well aware that her attraction to junk men exists. She admits it herself that she wants an abusive relationship despite it being, you know, abusive and horrible and nothing I've said helps. I've since cut contact with all parties due to some long-standing family hogwash that's nearly as old as I am. But damn if her last two marriages weren't a giant mistake. So this story stands as a very twisted testament to the phrase, the heart wants what it wants. I mean, there's role-playing, and then there's this. Does she only want a relationship when it's this real? Just how much is she actually willing to put up with? Story 12. 
My male cousin went to a very conservative Church of Christ university where the women who attend there are infamous for trying to get their Mrs. degree. The girl he was dating was no different. They got married six months after they graduated with a huge southern wedding. Ten bridesmaids, 250 guests, at least seven different wedding showers, a band, and open bar at the rehearsal dinner, etc. They get married and are divorced four months later because she was cheating on him the entirety of their relationship. They had spicy time once on their honeymoon and less than three times after that. Some people want a wedding and not a marriage. Of course, that jerk kept all the wedding gifts they received, even the ones from his family. Story 13. Not me, but a family member. She was married after a quick relationship. Her family had money, and I think she wanted a nice life. A few months later, she was in a horrific car crash which unalived her nine-year-old sister, their grandmother, and left her with severe injuries. Shattered three-fourths of her face, and she may have broken a hip, and her back too, if memory serves. She was in a medically induced coma when her sister's funeral occurred. Less than a month or two after she gets out of the hospital, her husband married about six months at this point, says to her, You need to get over the accident. Edit. I should mention that the money her husband's family had was small-town money. Thousands, not millions. Story 14. My story is closely related, even if we weren't officially married. I was planning a wedding with my ex fiance I did most of the planning. I work as a nurse, and my father was perishing of cancer on the other side of the USA. Between work, paid time off to take care for him, I wasn't in the house much for a few months as my dad had taken a turn for the worst. Found out that she had been smashing her ex-boyfriend both when I was working night shift and when I was in Cali caring for my perishing dad. Broke it off two months before the wedding and lost a lot of money in the process. I still can't believe that evil witch cheated on me while my dad was perishing. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 15. My ex was manipulative and found every excuse not to meet my friends or limit my time away from my family. Long story short, we ran into one of my good friends in the mall and they seemed to hit it off really well. I was happy because I was like, yes, I could finally have a double date because that's what my friend suggested. But when we got home, she mentioned that she didn't like his job. Even though he was one of the nicest and funniest guys in the world, that was it. I saw that she just purposely kept me away from everyone. And that ticked me off. She ended up cheating on me with some guy out of the country, and we got divorced later because nobody took anything from each other. I wonder what the reason behind her manipulation was. The fact that she was cheating while trying to restrict who he saw was really ironic. Maybe she felt some kind of guilt deep down for cheating and kind of projected that onto him? Either that or she's just a jerk. Could be as simple as that. Story 16. The guy I married went instantly from being fun and adventurous to an absolute psycho. He stopped using my name and would just call me wife even after I asked him to stop. He started insisting that I didn't need other friends and, aren't you done with that, when I would want to meet up with people. If I hung out with a guy, then I was cheating in his mind. I caught him going through my phone to find proof. There was none. There were two incidents that led to the bitter end. I caught him calling me a dirty tramp and jerking off over me while I slept. And then, at a concert, he freaked out and had to be dragged off of me because I talked to an old male acquaintance for five minutes. That one left bruises, and I left him. Peanhead. Story 17. Not me, but I worked at a company where two employees were engaged. After they married, she sent out an all-users email advising her name change, and then, almost exactly a year later, sent another one changing it back. Apparently, right up to the wedding, she was seeing someone else. It seems that both her and her fiancé knew it was a mistake, but it was one of those enormous weddings and her father was paying out a buttload of money. They were even having dance lessons for when the bride and groom have the first dance, that kind of deal. The whole thing was like a super tanker that couldn't be stopped, so they had their day and split up soon after. Story 18 
I attended a wedding a few years ago that wasn't over-the-top extravagant, but is what I want if I could ever save up enough money. Beautiful venue, open bar with local beers, great food, and tastefully decorated. A couple months after, we heard through our friends that it came out that he'd been cheating with one of the bridesmaids in the year or two leading up to the wedding, and that he had this concept that nothing he did had repercussions or harmed anyone, the bad kind of philosophy major, so he didn't see the big deal. Story 19. My brother experienced this. He had a cop wedding on the beach in flip-flops. Everyone drunk as hell. And part of the joke of the wedding was that the officiant asked if anyone had any objections. Everyone had an objection. They yelled drunken, terrible stuff at the two of them for a good two or three minutes before he yelled back something like, Curse it! And curse all of you! I'm marrying this woman regardless! It was crazy cringe to witness, but he told me after, You know, I had half a mind to call it off right then as I listened to what they were saying and realized everyone was probably right. So hold on, I'm having trouble following the narrative of this one. Wasn't the joke supposed to be everyone had an objection? All these objections were supposed to be a joke. You mean there was enough dirt on them that they were all right? What kind of stuff were these two doing outside of the marriage? Story 20. My sister's marriage lasted about 40 days. She found out he was a child pervert when my other sister came forward that he'd been violating her for the last four months. When he was arrested, police found a video of me getting dressed on his phone. I thank God every day that she came forward when she did, because he was grooming me to be his next victim. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison and has no contact orders with everybody in my immediate family. This event was the end of my childhood. Story 21. Mine lasted two years. I know, over the year limit for the post. The last six months of the marriage, I was deployed to Iraq. I was a happier person while being deployed than I was living at home. That's when I realized I had a toxic home life. I was sacrificing my own happiness to do everything I could to keep my ex happy and just thought that's how it's supposed to be. I didn't want to come home from deployment because I knew I would be miserable. I moved out after I got back and life has been much better since. Currently in Afghanistan and cannot wait to get home. Story 22. When my former buddy called me to tell me he got herpes from my wife, I was in Afghanistan. Edit. I did not contract it. My buddy called to warn me. Edit 2. That was years ago. I'm retired now and remarried happily to an amazing woman that somehow tolerates me. Edit 3. I am thankfully told me. Story 23. Mine lasted less than a year. He was an incredibly abusive peanhead that burdened me with tons of junk we couldn't afford, then refused to work his damn self. So I used to pull 16-hour days back to back. Turns out, instead of working and helping me take care of the house, he was out cheating. In all reality, he was the one who left me, but once I got out of the situation, I realized how awful it was and didn't go back. Story 24. Two months in, he told me I was too fat and will no longer be having spicy time with me. I lost 75 pounds in three months by doing it the wrong way, and he told me he was already seeing someone else. He seemed surprised that my parents would no longer pay his bills and was kicked off their property 30 days later, per laws of my state. Story 25. Sitting across from the courthouse waiting to go in. I thought, you're going to look back on this moment and remember that you knew it was the wrong thing to do. I certainly did. We only got married because I was living with him and my whole family wouldn't speak to us as we were living in sin. Well, we showed them. Story 26. He casually invited his parents along on our honeymoon and told them we'd pay for it. And they not only accepted, they were so excited and immediately wanted to take over planning it. Obviously, that wasn't the only awful thing he did. Eventually found out he was cheating on me, and I fast-tracked divorce before there were any kids or assets involved. Story 27. I had some friends that got married and divorced within a year. 
It turns out she had major doubts but went through with it anyway, then cried for the whole honeymoon and told him she had made a huge mistake. They posted all these normal pictures of them looking happy in Hawaii, but it came out later what a miserable nightmare the trip was. Story 28. Cliffs. My new wife changed the second I said, I do. She instantly became controlling, manipulative, and would lie about anything to get her way, and double down when caught. The marriage lasted about ten months. Before we got married, she was considerate, kind, and sweet. Apparently, all for show. Story 29. Not my story, but a fraternity brother of my husband had a marriage that lasted maybe a hundred days before they split. Apparently, she didn't internalize that marrying a military person would mean moving around. And he just assumed she knew and was good with it. Too long didn't read? Communicate. Story 30. His brother asked to move in with us, and I said no. Brother ended up moving in anyway and during subsequent arguments, he said, No wonder people get divorced all the time. We had been married for about six months at that point. Went very downhill from there. Story 31. I supported us working full-time with a one-hour commute each way via Vanpool. She complained about having to pick me up at the Vanpool stop after work because it was happy hour at the bars. She also seemed to have trouble keeping other guys' peens out of her place. Story 32. Happened to my friends. Husband suggests an open marriage. Girl, for some reason, agrees. Fast forward three months into being married, he gets jealous because they find a hot guy and the girl likes the guy better than her husband. They lasted six months. Story 33. Not me, but my ex-girlfriend a few years ago. Before we met, she was dating a guy for about seven years or so. Due to family pressures, tradition, etc., she went and got married to the guy. They went home in separate cars because she said they both realized it was a mistake. Lived with her cousins for six months because she was scared to tell her parents. Story 34. First one, she left me for a guy she met in her furry group. Second, claimed to be Polly, moved her boyfriend in while I was living there, cut all intimacy with me, mentally abused me and kicked me out when she overheard me talking about the possibility of divorce. Story 35. I've been married for 20 years. I think the last 20 could have been way better if I didn't rush to marry and had really known more about the person I was marrying. I'm not sure I made a mistake, but if I had a redo, I would pick someone different. Story 36. When she cheated on me for the third time in 10 months, because for some reason the first two didn't convince me. Story 37. The younger sister of my then best friend married a lazy jerkwad insisting that she could fix him. Spoiler alert, she couldn't. Story 38. When I came home from the honeymoon and there was a foreclosure notice posted on the house door, his response? Now it's your problem too. Story 39. I found out that I was pregnant and he stopped talking to me for several days. He then pressured me into having an abortion, then we divorced. Story 40. Right during the wedding ceremony, I've been sent a private homemade video of my bride with another man. Story 41. When I found out on my son's first birthday that she cheated again. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.